takes me to that promised land. Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. Why don't you stand and sing it with me here today? What a day. shall see when I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand leads me to that promised land oh what a day glorious day thank the Lord here today. God, we anticipate your coming. God, we're thankful that one day we're going to make it. You're going to call our name. <laughs> Amen. There's an anticipation in my spirit and in my soul today. To make heaven my home. Amen, amen. You can be seated this morning. Brother Andy is going to help us today and receive our Sunday school offering. And we thank you for your continued support of our Sunday school department here at Calvary. And I know that the Lord is going to bless you for your giving. Amen. Brother Chris is going to come and bring us the word here this morning. And uh, let's receive the word with gladness today. We praise the Lord, everybody. want to bring your attention to the book of Matthew chapter 25. It is good to be here today and I'm, I'm glad we have sunshine and blue skies versus the alternative. Amen. Matthew 25, I'll be reading at verse 6 and through verse 10. It says, and at midnight, a cry was heard. This is the midnight cry that Pastor was talking about a couple weeks ago. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. They weren't ready. Turn to your neighbor and tell them they weren't ready. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. 
And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready, those who were ready, went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. I'll be quite honest here this morning. I was entirely unsure of what I was going to present to you until last night. And I'm sorry if it's a shocker to you, but just because we are preachers doesn't mean that God speaks to us as clearly as we want him to at times. And but last night I got the one call, just as many of you did, about Sam and Ryan being baptized today. And so for just the next little while, I want to talk to us about getting ready to go. Getting ready to go. Let's lift our hands all across this place and go before the Lord in prayer. God, we're thankful for your goodness and your kindness to us here this morning. God, we're praying that your word would, would touch our hearts and touch our minds. God, I want to be changed today. God, I want to be challenged today, whether it's in this service or in the next service. God, do a work in me today. I've come expecting to receive something from you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Why don't we just give God some praise across this place today? Amen. It is entirely a understatement to say we have entered into a dark, dark hour. And our world has transformed within hours. I don't claim to be an expert on end time prophecy, but as of late, we have been clearly shown how possible some of the impossible prophecies are. We have yet to experience a mark of the beast, but we have been clearly shown how possible a world with this mark really is. The Bible says that this mark will be in the right hand, some say forearm, or in the forehead. And for a while, there were those who could not think of this being possible, but COVID happened. And for a while, you couldn't go to the store, the mall, the doctor's office without them checking your temperature. And where would they scan for your temperature? Everybody lined up. We'll scan your wrist or we'll scan your forehead. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest and transparent. I was pretty disappointed in humanity when we all kind of just lined up in a single file line waiting to get scanned to go in. I honestly thought there was going to be a lot more pushback than there was, but there wasn't. We already passed the training for it. And I know of, as an electrician, there were some electrical jobs that I've done where there was even some houses I couldn't walk into without being scanned. The Bible says all eyes will see the Antichrist. All eyes will see the Antichrist. It wasn't just maybe two decades ago that we would have never thought this to be possible, but now who doesn't carry a cell phone in their pocket and who doesn't watch the news and who doesn't have a television in their home? And we saw it as Russia invaded Ukraine. Before that conflict, I couldn't tell you who President Zelensky was. But within hours... A nobody became a hero. No, somebody that nobody knew at all, all of a sudden every eye knows who that is. I'm not saying President Zelensky is the Antichrist, but I am saying we have been shown how possible, how possible these things are. And nobody can literally become famous amongst every person in the world, and, and we can believe that, but there are videos you can find of masses in the streets screaming his name, shouting President Zelensky's name. And uh, if we were going to change the narrative a little bit for the sake of imagination, it's not too far-fetched too far -fetched to see masses gathering together in the streets shouting and screaming the name 
of the man of sin who's going to be revealed to us in the embodiment of everything anti-God. It's not too far-fetched to say it is a dangerous thing, I believe, to push these things aside and say, well, this is just too far in the future to believe in. It's not. It's been laid out plain for everyone to see, and right now, events have and are occurring that fixes every eye to the center of the world and the atrocities that are taking place in the nation of Israel. And I don't intend to really be somber this morning. Again, I tell you, I am no expert on end-time prophecy, but the Bible does speak of the beasts of the world coming out to war. And the people that have, the things that have happened to the Jewish people beheading their children, setting families on fire, gunning families down in their cars. These are beastly actions. These are beastly actions. And the media has tried to really turn a blind eye to some of these things, but I sp it speaks to anyone here today. If we have chosen to ignore what has happened and what is happening across our world, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. Don't fall asleep in what's going on in our world right now. It is a tragedy, to say the least, to read and to see the horrific acts of terror that have occurred. But beyond that, around the world, there are calls for the eradication of the Jews, the eradication of God's people. And this has gotten to such a degree. I just told Pastor about, about this the other day. I read an article of a Jewish nurse, I believe, who was sitting in her front lawn, talking on the phone, just sitting in her yard on the phone, and out of nowhere, a man believed to have been involved in a pro-Hamas protest. Uh, in broad daylight, children are playing outside. This man decided to stab this woman to death in her front lawn. These events that are going on they are very real, very real. And we can shut our eye if we want to, but these dark times are reaching our doorstep. And I wish I could tell you that it's going to get better, but it won't. I'm such a word of encouragement here today. It won't. We are going to see this kind of persecution. The Bible tells us we're going to be persecuted. There's a day coming where we will be persecuted, but we are we are in the evening time. We are in the midnight hour, but this morning I'm not going to try and scare anyone to the altar. I'm not going to try and shame you to an altar. It's not my desire to guilt you to an altar, but it is in recognizing that we are in the evening time and days are going to seem darker and darker. Wednesday night, it just kind of popped in my head the, the old lyrics of the of the old song waterway, there shall be light in the evening time. There shall be light in the evening time. And we can try and we can choose to be afraid and we can choose to be fearful. But when I stand here today, I'll be the first one if I have to, to, to proclaim I'm full of joy in knowing that there will always be a light in this world. Uh, there will always be a light in this world. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the times we're in, but lately I've just kind of gone back to the simplicity of everything, and I have a growing desire that I haven't really been able to, to kind of push off myself. It's the first thing that spills out of me when I pray, and it's a desire that resonates on the inside of me. I just want to be saved. I just want to be saved. I want oil in my lamp. I want to make sure I have everything I need so my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. I want to make sure that I don't grow tired and weary and asleep in the time where I should be awake. It never hurts to get back to the simplicity of what this is. I just want to be saved. I have my ears tuned, anticipating that trumpet sound, anticipating the angelic host saying, the bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. I understand 
And I'm just going to be real today. I listened to quite a bit of Bible studies from, from great apostolic preachers, both young, young and old. Whether I watch them on YouTube or I listen to them on the radio while at work. But I just recently listened to a podcast. Does anybody, does everybody know the McKillop family in Plaster Rock? Uh, Bishop McKillop, he's the bishop there. I listened to him and I listened to this podcast as he began to to weep in that microphone. There's only three people in that room. And he began to get every minister who would listen in agreement. We pray, listen, we pray that God heals your body. We pray that God blesses you. We pray these blessings on you. But first and more, foremost, we pray that you are saved. We pray that you make up in your mind, I hate sin and I'm living for God. I listened as that elder began to weep and cry, saying over and over and over again, I just want to know him. I just want to know him. I just want to know him. And if you did not know, two years ago, Bishop McKillop had a heart attack while preaching and was rushed to the hospital where they told his wife that he was brain dead. But 31 hours later, he walked out of that hospital and he stated I didn't know before then how quickly death could come. Why? Why are, you, why are you telling us this? The events even in our state recently have proven how quickly a life can be taken. It was so quick, no time to repent. No time to get right. No time to forgive whoever they needed to forgive. No time to say sorry to whomever they needed to say sorry to. And I am left here with reality. It's one thing to be ready to meet him after an altar call, but quite another to stay ready to meet him. The only reason why the five wise went into that wedding ceremony was strictly because the Bible said they had oil in their lamps. And it also says in Matthew 25 verse 10, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready, those who were ready, went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. They were ready to go. Believe in this place today that we need every person in this room and whoever shows for the family worship service to make up in their mind that we are ready to go. The signs are around us. The times are around us. And we are quickly running out of time to get ready. I pray whether it be in this service or in our family worship, I pray that we get a desire in our spirit that says it's time to get right with God. It's time to start praying. It's time to start getting ready to go. When is when the... When Israel went to war after the attacks of October 7th, I already said it, but everyone has been waken and shaken over this conflict. And I'm not on Facebook much, but I began to see people who have left the church posting about how Israel is at war and declaring that Jesus is coming soon. As I was studying, I couldn't help myself but ask the question, if... If, I don't know if it'll happen, but if Israel and, and the Hamas conflict stops, are we going to stay ready? If God delays, if the bridegroom delays, will you be ready? Just in case, if we didn't catch it in the parable, it was as the bridegroom delayed. When the foolish realized we waited too long. I'm not trying to scare anybody today. But for those who do not have a relationship with the Lord. You're running out of days to build one. For anyone in this room that may not be right with God. You are running out of time. To get right. Whether it be in this service or in the next service. You have an opportunity to make up your mind to live for him. But as I said, I'm not really here to scare people here today. 
But for those of us in this room who are ready, who are looking, who are anticipating, it was when the followers came back to Jesus declaring, Lord, even the devils tremble at thy name. Jesus looks back at them and says, big deal. I beheld Satan fall like lightning. And I don't want you to rejoice the fact that devils tremble at your name. I need you to rejoice because your, your name is written in heaven. And so today, for those of us that have been looking and we've been waiting, rejoice not that there are demonic powers that tremble at his name. We're just giving the devil credit. But in our worship service and in our Bible studies, rejoice because we have a new name written down in glory. And guess what? It's mine. It's mine. I understand these days are, are dark and gloomy. I understand we don't know what, what tomorrow holds. But as we run this race, we are looking unto Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith. We can choose to be scared in this time and fearful, but what a hope we have. What a hope we have in Jesus just in case we overlook it, we have been given a, re a reason to rejoice. We have been given a reason to praise. The enemy can, uh, maybe I shouldn't, but the enemy can kind of send storms our way and kind of send recuses our way and chaos our way, but he's just angry. Our name is on the deed to the property he was kicked out of. He's just angry that we get a, a eternity of worshiping and joy and, and love and peace. And so in these final days, I charge you today, be not afraid. This is the greatest day to be saved. This is the greatest day for the church. All the signs, all the breaking, all of the chaos. It's God trying to tell us the bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. And for those in this room that may not be ready, we can push it aside if we want. We can ignore it. We can turn our shoulder, but and get rid of our expectation. But the Bible says he's coming when you will not expect it. And I've been reading this scripture over and over and over again. The final words of Jesus that are recorded in your Bible is surely, I come quickly. And if there was ever a time for us to get in agreement with John the Beloved and pray even so, come Lord Jesus it is right now. But in knowing his word and knowing that he is coming quickly, we need to make sure we have everything we need. Because every moment that passes, every minute, every second, his return is getting closer. And I just want to be ready. I just want to be ready. Today, if you have oil in your lamp, you understand that his words are true and faithful. And we all want to be ready to go. I just want to be right with God. I just want to know him. Matthew 24, verse 42 says, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Watch, therefore, the English Standard Version says, stay awake. Other translations say, be alert. Don't fall asleep, especially while I'm preaching. We have come too far, gained too much territory. Too many souls are on the line to fall asleep in time of urgency. Whether you want to believe it or not, he will. He will. He will come back. And we will either be ready 
or we will not. We will either be awake or we will be sound asleep. So how can I be ready? How can I be ready? I'm here to tell you that first and foremost, you need to love him. You need to understand that he loves you. And we need to know him. The Bible says that those who will go to hell, those who will be in torment, those who will be in everlasting punishment, will hear the words from the voice of God. Depart from me, for I never knew you. Even in our parable this morning, as those wise men pounded on the door. Let us in, Lord. The Bible says in Matthew 25, verse 12, But he answered and said, Assuredly, be sure I said to you, I do not know you. I'm just reaching for one person here today. I don't know who it is, but God wants to know you. He wants to know you. And your time is running short. Your window of opportunity is about to close. The bridegroom's door is shutting. I don't know about you, but I just want to be ready to go. Why don't we just lift our hands all across this place right now? I just want to be ready to go. I just want to be ready to go. God, help us today. I am thankful here today that we have all have the opportunity to experience the same testimony. The king offers his citizenship to all who would, who would desire it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And those men asked, as they were speaking in tongues, what must we do? What must we do? The Bible says, and I understand, this is very simple. This is very simple, especially amongst our ranks. But the Bible says that Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. You've got to repent. You've got to be able to find yourself an altar and begin to say, God, I need to change. And I need your hand to help me. It is very often, I believe one preacher said it like this, how many altar calls are we going to need before we change? It is very often that we overlook, when we overlook the, the power and the mercy of an altar. The place to meet with God. The place to say, God, I'm a sinner, and I need your blood to wash over me. But then he said, you've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. You've got to abide in the vine. You've got to take on my name. Can I tell you, there's power in the name of Jesus. That power in that name can reach far past whatever you've done, whatever lie you might have told, whatever you've deceived, whether you've even adultered or you've broken any of our commandments. That name has power to completely change your life. And then he said, if you do these two things, it is a promise. It shall, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And for us who are saved, we got to be refilled time and time and time and time and time and time again. I want to be ready.
That's our plan here today. Johnny, you can help me out. We believe here today. I do believe that there are some things that need to occur before God comes back. But those, that list of, that checklist is getting smaller. It's getting smaller by the day. And whether or not he comes back, I mean, it's really up to him if he so decides to come back tomorrow, today while we're worshiping, or as we're driving home. It's really up to him, but if he does, I pray, I want us to ask ourselves the question, am I ready? There's a lot of people who were not ready. But as soon as Israel became attacked, they were woken up. And then they decided to be ready. But here's my question. If, if, because it is true and right to say that the media has been trying to push it, kind of push it off our radar a little bit. Why don't you just ignore what's going on? right here? Why don't you just ignore what's happening? Why don't you just ignore what's going on in our world today? Why don't you just ignore if you're not noticing it, you really have to look for news. You really have to look for truth now. As it tries and as the enemy tries to pull it off our radar, are we making it a point that I'm going to be ready day to day to day to day it's one thing to be ready on Sunday, but is it, it's quite another to be ready on Monday. Lately, every morning, every morning, I've woken up. And I don't know what it is, but it's just first thought that comes to my mind. I just want to be saved. I just want to be saved. Right now, all across this place, I want us to stand... I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar. That's up to you. It is open. But that's up to you. If you are not ready, now is your time to get ready. All across this place, let's lift our hands as we begin to sing. Let's go before the Lord in prayer here today for just a moment. Next Life few moments. was filled with guns and war. All of us got trampled on the floor. I wish we'd all been ready The children died, the days grew old A piece of bread could buy a bag of gold I wish we'd all been ready And there's no time to change your mind the sun has come and you've been left behind. And there's no time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left a noise and turns her head he's gone I hope we'll all be ready and two men walking up a hill one disappears and one's left standing still I wish we No time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left behind. Oh, there's no time to change your mind. The sun has come 